Miami Dolphins fans, welcome to a victory Sunday. First one of the season. Cheers to all of you out there. I'm your host, Larry Kay. This is Fanatic Fury. This is a quick reaction video. The Miami Dolphins did, in fact, defeat uh, the Los Angeles Chargers in a nail-biter of a game. Um, interesting game because we won by two points. Uh, Jason Sanders misses an extra point to end the game. Had us all biting our nails. But I did, in fact, predict a Dolphins victory on my preseason prediction video. I thought Tua and McDaniel had something to prove. Uh, it proved to be true. Uh, Tua out there threw for a bunch of yards, over 400 yards. Um, you know, some mistakes. But overall, I thought he had a, an overall good game. There was some to be desired. Uh, you had the interception in the end zone. You had some of the fumbles I think might be attributable to the center, but it's got to get cleaned up. It was interesting, right? Because it wasn't like this was the epic shootout, per se, that we had anticipated between Justin Herbert and Tua Tungavailoa. It seemed more like Tua shooting out and the Chargers just running the ball very effectively. Uh, Austin Eckler doing very well. Kellen Moore, uh, really, for most of the game, I thought, outdueling Vic Fangio. And I think for a lot of the game, there was a lot to be desired with Fangio. He wasn't bringing pressure. He was playing a, a zone in a lot of cases where it was a soft zone. It was leading to the offensive line of Los Angeles having their way with us. The running backs running for you know four to six yards a clip. And then wide open receivers when it counted. Um, but the defense in certain situations when the Chargers were backed up, where there was a near safety there, and we really needed to change the momentum of the game, the defense did their job. Zach Sealer doing his job. Christian Wilkins on one of the drives had two really great plays in a row. Um, but I thought it was interesting that despite the fact that for most of the game, it seemed like Fangio was a bit on his heels, when it counted most, which is honestly a bit different than what we're used to, right? When it counted most at the end of the game is when you saw Fangio go all out and call a really interesting exotic blitz if you watch what happened. And I'll get more in depth about it. But you see that they pulled a defensive lineman and they had an extra defensive back on the field. They blitzed with both outside linebackers, Phillips and Chubb. And they brought a safety on a blitz. And they had an extra defensive uh, back for coverage. It didn't matter because Herbert had no time to react whatsoever anyway. And he went down on fourth down. And it was interesting because the play just before that on third and 30, we had played a soft again. And they had gotten back uh, like 17 yards. So it was now fourth and 13. But at that point, and that was the second time on that drive, that we brought a lot of pressure and a blitz, and look what happened. Uh, I don't know if that was a chess match that Fangio was waiting to you know, expose all game, or if that was just the nature of how it all shook out. But either way, we got to be happy about it as Dolphins fans. Um, Raheem Mostert, a pretty decent day. You know, Sometimes he was getting stifled, but other times he was look, running for five yards a clip himself. From what I understand, Moore, you know, is a great offensive mind. The offensive line for Los Angeles is a strength. And if you think about it that way, then maybe this is one of the toughest, you know, running and rushing attacks we're going to face all year, which would be good for us. But there's going to be other formidable teams. We have to clean up on defense uh, a bit here. Um, nonetheless, it was on the road. Our offensive line, you're going up against Bosa. You're going up against a, a good defensive line in the trenches and I thought our offensive line was not perfect uh, there were times we were stuffed on the run there were times where Tua looked like he was a little bit frustrated but still got passes off but I thought our line without Armstead held its own to be quite frank with you now Tua you know a couple throws that were off but for the most part Tua had a, a, a good game I mean he was he was innovating so you know, one or two throws, he forced it into triple coverage, and it really did look like, once again, Tua was doing a pre-snap read and forcing it. But for most of that game, there were several plays that you can point to. Several plays you can point to where Tua, you know, the play broke down or something happened that wasn't expected. Tua kept his eyes down the field. He used his legs. He used his eyes. He used his mind. He made a different read, and he got the ball down into a tight spot in a tight window and converted for big plays. This was 
the type of game. If you're a Tua fan, if you want Tua to succeed, which most of us Dolphins fans do, this is the type of game you want to see from him. This was a game where the quarterback had a lot to do with the proficiency and the explosiveness of the offense, and it was good to see. I thought on a couple drives, Smythe had a good showing out there, which is bodes well for the way we want to use our tight end. Um, so overall... Just a, a good way to start the season, a tough game on the road against a formidable adversary that's probably going to be there towards the end of the year as a, a playoff contender. And if we want to be that contender, then that's what we have to do. Like I said, it's SMS, man. It's show me season. And so far, what I've seen and what they've shown me is something to be happy about. But we still have stuff to clean up, okay? The defense has got to be more stout especially against the run. If teams can run on you to that extent, you're not going to win enough games in this league. That defense has to bow up. That defense has to get more stout. Fangio has to figure out how he's going to call the defense with these personnel to you know, get us to where we want to be. And again, you know, as much as I want to sing Mike McDaniel's praises and, and Tua's praises, and it's really nothing against Tua at this point, towards the end of the game, We've seen it before, guys. We've seen it before. Towards the end of the game, McDaniel, I thought, got cute again. And what I mean is, it's the last drive. We have a chance to go up. And we're under the two-minute warning. L.A. only has two timeouts. We have four downs, and we're close to the goal line. We did not try to run the ball even once, despite the fact that we had run it pretty well on that drive. You know, you run it once for four yards, three yards, you force L.A. to take a timeout. And you know if you let, you know, you stop the clock, they're, the way they've been moving the ball all day. Now, we wound up with, because Fangio finally brought the pressure, causing the intentional grounding, which, you know, really got L.A. behind the sticks and then again going after them and getting them even further behind the sticks. It just so happened that we saved our best for last. But on McDaniel's part, when you are under the two-minute warning with four downs to get into the end zone at the end of the game against a team that's moving the ball on you effortlessly, and they only have two timeouts left, you should definitely put the ball on the ground at least once and run the ball to try to force them to use a timeout. It worked out for us in the end. I'm not somebody who's going to sit here and be a armchair GM and critique and you know Monday morning quarterback after a win and a really impressive performance, especially by our offense. But it's just something to think about is all I'll say. Uh, but overall, I'll, I'll have a more in-depth discussion about it if I do another video before Tuesday. If not, then make sure you tune in this Tuesday at 7 p.m. It's another episode of LG Shaking the Panel. I want to welcome and shout out the people who have been joining the channel as official Fury Fam members. Phil was the latest one to join. We are going to do an executives chat at some point uh, where just the people at the executives table are going to sit down with me on a live stream and we are just going to chop it up for you viewers out there. If you haven't done so yet, it takes a millisecond. Hit that subscribe button right there. One millisecond to subscribe to more great Finns content. Hit subscribe. Whether you're a Chargers fan, a Finns fan, just a fan of the NFL, look, the Chargers are going to be okay. They're a good team. Their rushing attack is stout. Their defense did what they had to do against, you know, a good offense. It's, it's not easy to go up against us, but they tried to put the pressure on. Uh, decent coaching for the Chargers. They'll be there in the end. This was just a hard-fought week one uh, game. So if you haven't done so yet, you like good football content, you're a Finns fan, hit subscribe. It's right here. If you want to really be Come fully invested in supporting this channel. Please consider becoming a member, become an official Fury Fam member. Uh, shout outs to Phil, to uh, Pam, shout outs to the people who have joined, Lucci, everybody who's joined. Adam, continue to join and to, we have three different levels you can pick. Pick your level and join up. There's content on there right now, which is a shake in the blender with shake pilot show that Shake and I did back in February. There's going to be more content for you on there. But smash subscribe. Join us on Tuesday at 7. Everybody out there, man, it's a victory Sunday. Enjoy it. Watch your highlights. Check out your stats. Larry K will be back with you very shortly. But we can enjoy it. And it's looking like in this show me season, thus far, what the Finns have shown me is a lot of stuff I like. Finns up. Larry K out.